This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. At the TensorFlow module that is provided to us from Google, and this is more generally a module that is good at various things matrix related, so manipulating uh, matrices, but specifically a lot of the functionality that TensorFlow offers and that it's geared towards and that it's more widely been used for is problems in machine learning. So generally this is an end-to-end -end open source machine learning platform and we can make use of this platform in different languages. C++ has uh, access to this. There's an API for C++ and there's also one for Python. So we're going to be installing TensorFlow and making use of TensorFlow to solve a specific problem. So if you want more information on TensorFlow, you can check out the official website at tensorflow.org for more information on that. You can also check out the installation page, which if you just Google for TensorFlow install, you should find information on how to install TensorFlow for your respective OS that you're on. If you're on Mac or Linux, the process for installing is very straightforward. Basically, assuming that you have Python and PIP, the Python package manager, already installed on your machine, all you need to do is go to a terminal and type in pip install TensorFlow. So long as you do that, uh, I already have this installed on my machine, so I see a lot of requirement already satisfied messages. If you don't have it installed, you'll see um, it installing on your machine. If you're on Windows, then there is uh, there are instructions on this website for you to get that set up on Windows as well. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. So once you have Python on your machine, I guess I'm assuming that you have Python installed on your machine, and then once you have TensorFlow is set up and ready to go, then you can follow along. And what we're going to be doing specifically in this video is we're going to be classifying some text. We're going to be doing some text classification, uh, specifically text classification on a movie review or a series of movie reviews, I should say. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be parsing through movie reviews that are obtained from the internet website IMDB. So that's Internet Movie Database. And these movie reviews have either a positive or negative sentiment. So that is are the reviews positive? Are they a good review for the movie? Or are they negative? Are they reviewed uh, in, a, in a bad way? Is the, is the movie review that we're looking at um, not very flattering towards the movie? So every movie review that we have is going to have either uh, some binary classification that's going to refer to whether or not that movie is positive or negative. So whether or not that review is positive or negative. And the data set that we're going to be using is going to be pulled in from TensorFlow. There's a number of stock data sets that TensorFlow provides, one of them being this uh, data set from IMDb. And this is a data set of about 50,000 movie reviews that are all in text from this internet movie database. And generally what we're going to be doing is splitting that data set down the middle. So 25,000, 25,000. Half of it's going to be for training our model, and then the other half is going to be for testing. And if you're unfamiliar with this uh, kind of notion of taking a data set and splitting it into a training and testing set, I recommend that you check out my uh, video series on machine learning where I go into a little bit more detail about that, why that's important, and how to uh, how to actually go about doing that. There's going to be a lot of overlap in this video as well, so if that is not clear, you're free to follow along and see how I do this. Otherwise, if you want some more information, uh, you can check that series of videos out as well. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to first import TensorFlow into our Python file. So right now, all I have is an editor open. I'm using Vim. Uh, this is just the editor that I'm choosing to run and write Python in. You can use PyCharm. You can use Sublime Text. You can use whatever you like. Um, and I'm just going to be using this. If you like the way that I have Vim customized, you can check out another video on my channel that shows how to set up Vim, uh, specifically with Python bindings and autocomplete and all that good stuff if you want to use Vim like I do. Okay, so what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be importing just a line at the top of our file here, which is just to kind of safeguard against uh, some other versions of Python that might be running this. This is pretty typical syntax that you'll see also at the TensorFlow docs. Uh, they'll have a uh, number of things from future that they'll import. And you can more or less just have this line in there and just kind of ignore it. I'm just going to import three things from this underscore, underscore, future, underscore, underscore, uh, absolute import, division, and print function. So on to the next thing where we're actually going to import TensorFlow to make sure that it's installed on our machine. So I'm just going to import TensorFlow as TF. And then again, if you haven't seen this convention, which I assume you have, because I assume that you're not diving into this video as your first foray into Python, uh, Generally, we're using TF as a shorthand to access any of the modules that we can, uh, you know, access from TensorFlow. So we'll say TF dot something, and that something will be a module that will be or part of the module that will be imported from TensorFlow. 
One of the other things that we're going to be using from TensorFlow is Keras. And Keras is a separate uh, program platform that is also used widely in the machine learning space. And TensorFlow provides an API to Keras. And there's some functionality that's very nice in Keras that we're going to be uh, essentially using TensorFlow as an API to access. So we're going to say from TensorFlow import Keras. And that's going to give us access to that. And then the last thing that we're also going to need is NumPy. So we're going to say import NumPy as NP or NumPy as NP. So I believe this comes with TensorFlow. If it doesn't, again, what you can do is you can just do a very simple pip install, which should also work on Windows as well. If you do pip install NumPy, this will go fetch the module and install it. And I already have it installed on my machine, so I've got requirement already satisfied. Same type of convention, NP dot is going to allow us to access functions in NumPy. And then just to make sure that we've got everything set up here, I'm going to say print, and I'm going to say TF dot, and I'm going to do two underscores version, and then also two underscores at the end. And this is just going to allow me to print out the current version of TensorFlow that I have installed on my machine. So let's just go ahead and write this. We'll going to clear the terminal to get rid of that extra output. And then I'm going to say Python imdb.py. This is the name of the file that I'm writing to. So it's going to import the module TensorFlow and I see that I'm running 1.13.1. So this is just showcasing the current you know, version of TensorFlow. Uh, depending on when you watch this, this might be, uh, you know, kind of an earlier version of TensorFlow. They update the API and the documentation frequently enough where some of these things may break. I will do my best to update the code on my GitHub that I'll be providing for all of these tutorials as frequently as I can, just to make sure that if they update anything, it doesn't break. Um, but I can't promise because I have a lot of different files and hopefully it should be easy enough to isolate if you encounter an issue. Anyway, that's that. The code, as I mentioned, will be available on my GitHub and you can check that out instead of just following along and typing if that's more your thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just get rid of this line because we just wanted to kind of verify that TensorFlow is installed on our machine and we're going to now download the IMDB data set. So this is again the data set from the Internet Movie Database and what's really nice is that we can use the Keras API via TensorFlow to import that data set and have it uh, store it into a variable. So the way that we can do that is we can say IMDB. So we're just going to call this variable IMDB and we're going to say this is equal to Keras.datasets dot IM data sets to IMDB. So again, if you want to see what other data sets the uh, Keras module has access to, there's a number of other data sets that they provide uh, ready to go that you can just load into your Python uh, you know, version and just kind of play with. Um, and this is you know the IMDB data set that we're going to be working with. So if you want to check out some other data sets that you might think uh, might be more interesting to you, or if you want to play with sort of in addition to this tutorial, by all means, check that out. Just Google for Keras TensorFlow data sets, and you should be able to find a lot of information on that. And then as I mentioned before, what we're going to do is we're going to split this data set up into training and testing uh, sets. And we're going to specifically do this in terms of two tuples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say train underscore data comma train underscore labels. So this is going to be the training data and the training labels uh, in our first tuple. And then in the second tuple, what we're going to do is we're going to say test data comma test labels. And then this is going to be equal to IMDB dot load underscore data load underscore data. And then I'm going to uh, include an optional parameter here called num underscore words. And this is going to allow us to limit uh, it's going to allow us to essentially keep the top 10,000 most frequently occurring words in the training data. So any of the rare words that are not within this top 10,000 are going to be discarded. So this is just going to allow us to kind of simplify uh, and, and get rid of some of the, um, I guess, more rare words so that we don't uh, skew the um, sentiment analysis too much. So just to kind of unpack what's going on here, uh, imdb.loadData that is a function that is provided from the Keras datasets module. We're loading in the data based on some specific parameter. In this case, we're limiting to the top, uh, the most frequent 10,000 words. And then we are unpacking that and storing the results of that into two separate tuples. The first tuple is a tuple of the training data and, and the respective labels. And then the next one is the test data and the test labels. So the training data or the test data, these are going to be the reviews themselves. So it's going to be the actual review. And the labels are going to be whether or not the um, whether or not the movie was reviewed positively or negatively according to the sentiment analysis. So let's just go ahead and just kind of explore this data and take a look at what we what we have. So we loaded that in. So let's just 
kind of take a moment to understand the format of the data that we have. So right now the data set is going to come pre-processed, which each example uh, is an array of integers. And each of the, so when I say the movie reviews are in the training data and test data, it's actually a list of, of numbers, of integers. And each of those integers corresponds to uh, a word in a dictionary. So for instance, the integer zero might correspond to some word in the dictionary. The integer one corresponds to another word. And every dictionary word is mapped to an integer. So all of the movie reviews that we see are just going to be lists of integers that correspond to words that are mapped to some uh, you know, word mapping in a dictionary. Uh, so each label that we have is going to be either a zero or one. So zero is going to indicate a negative review and one is going to indicate a positive review. So let's just go ahead and print out some stuff here. So we're going to say print training entries. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a functional string. So you should have Python three at least installed to make use of this convention in Python. And then we're going to say length of train underscore data. This is just going to give us how much data we actually have. Uh, like how many elements are in the training data set. And then we're also going to say uh, length, let's say labels, and then we'll say uh, length test, or let's say train labels, something like that. So basically what we should have here, and let me just make sure that this actually works, we're going to run this here, and we should see the lengths, the respective lengths of the number of training and and uh, labels and entries. So as we would expect, as we would hope, the number of entries, the number of reviews, separate reviews is 25,000. Again, that's 25,000 reviews in our training set. We also have 25,000 in our test set. And then we have each corresponding to each one of those reviews, a label. So that's either a zero or one that indicates either a negative or positive review respectively. So that is just kind of a sanity check there. I'm just going to remove that for now or comment it out uh, just so we kind of understand what we what we have and what we're looking at. So let's just take a look at the first entry of train data. So if I print out, let's just print out train underscore data of zero, this is going to be the list of integers that corresponds to the first movie review. So let me just go ahead and write that, run it. And notice that every time we run it, it takes a little time because every time it needs to import TensorFlow and everything like that. So it's running a little bit slower than it normally would um, just because it has to go through kind of linearly and do everything that we've already set up. Anyway, this list here is a list of numbers. Each one of these numbers, as I mentioned before, that corresponds to a uh, word in a dictionary. So each of those is mapped to a word in a dictionary. So one thing that we need to be aware of is that movie reviews could be of different lengths. Uh, one review is not going to be the same length of another one. And we can also take a look at, let's just go ahead and uh, you know verify that. So if we print out, let's say the length, let's just say we print out the length of train data of zero, and let's also print out the length of uh, train, I should end that parenthesis there, let's print out the length of train data one as well. So what we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, print out the uh, length of the review for the first review and the second one. So this is going to print out how many words are in the first review and how many words are in the second review. And again, the, uh, let's see, so it looks like I, I just misspelled L-E-N. This should be, uh, should be N there. Let's just go ahead and run that just to verify that it actually worked. So again, the train data of zero, that's the first review, train data of one is the second review, and we're just printing out the different lengths of each of those. So the first review contains 218 words. The second one contains 189 words. So one of the things that we need to be aware of is we're going to be building a neural net uh, for this. And one of the requirements of a neural net is that the inputs that we're putting into the neural net have to be the same length. So all of the uh, data that we're feeding that neural network needs to be of consistent length. And that's going to be a problem since all of the movie reviews are different lengths. So we're going to take a look at how we're actually going to overcome that hurdle uh, a little bit later in the next couple series of videos. So this is uh, just kind of a brief foray into TensorFlow. We will continue this in the next series of videos. What we're going to be doing is we're going to in the next video, look at how we can map the numbers that we're given in this uh, in this list of reviews and how we can convert each of those numbers to a word and each of those reviews into just a full review that we can actually parse in English. Uh, and then basically what we're going to be doing from there is we're going to be preparing the data that we're giving. We're going to feed that into a neural net and we're going to see what the outcome of that is. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy the first series of what should be an exciting uh, series on TensorFlow. And if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, 
don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section. The code I'll be hosting on my GitHub. You can download that for free, of course, and just check that out. Um, and then I will catch you in the next video.